Yo, what's up, everybody? How y'all doing? My name is RB Plays. I am your humble host on this side of the screen. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you uh, are all ready for a good time today. Today is our just chatting stream. I got to check something here. I restarted my computer, and every time I restart my computer, my sound settings get a little jacked up. Uh, okay, that's right. And that is not. That is not right. That should be like that. We're good now. <clears throat> you can't hear me. I think you're full of it. Hey, what's happening? Dorothy Kerb. It's Tracy. Lord Roden. Welcome one, welcome all. Um... How's the, you know what? I can't, I can't pull it up on my phone. I know, I know you hear me. I, I know you hear me. <clears throat> how'd the, uh, how'd the neighborhood shindig go yesterday, Estrissi? I saw you posted some pictures of the, uh, of the space. How'd it go? Or is that still going on? It's like a big party, right? But uh, anyway, welcome one, welcome all. Hope you all are ready for a, a nice little calm and relaxed just chatting session. I know that the title originally said that we were playing Minecraft today, but I forgot to change it because, you know, I'm old and forgetful and I'm not wearing, and I'm not wearing my hat. That's what it is. I'm not wearing my hat. That's better. You needed to drive a hole. You need to make a hole in a brick wall to make a doorway. Okay. Okay. That sounds like a good time. Not really. Not really. Oh, you needed to fix it. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Someone else made the hole. Okay. Gotcha. Understood. Uh, I'm, y'all, I'm looking at dehumidifiers. I need a dehumidifier in the wood shop. It's so humid out there. Is the title, is the typo? Oh gosh, dang it. Thanks, Roden. <laughs> Crap. Hey, stop it. Ugh. P O D A Y. Done. Updated. Haha. <laughs> Just put a lot of salt on the floor. No. No. No, 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 no. No. No, I need to get it. I, I wanted it. So I was thinking about putting in a mini split out there so that I could have heating and air conditioning and dehumidification and all that good stuff year round. But I really don't want to spend that much. I don't want to spend that much. So then I thought, well, I'll just put in an air conditioner, like a portable standalone air conditioner. And then I'll, and then I would add a, a, a heater in the corner. And I was like, eh. And then somebody, somebody at work mentioned, and maybe even some, maybe even one of you mentioned something about getting a dehumidifier for out in the garage. And I was like, hey, that's not a terrible idea. So I'm looking at dehumidifiers. And I found a couple that are fairly affordable that would do the, Yes, this is the wood shop in the garage, yes. And so it's 20, it's roughly 20 by 20 total space. So you're looking at, we're looking at what, 400 square feet? Yeah. How airtight is it? Pretty, pretty good except for around the garage doors. Pretty good except for around the garage doors. There are, it's a two car garage and there are two single car doors. Um, I can fix, one of the garage doors doesn't open at all. I've 
um, it it will help. It will help a little. Um, I know a couple of folks who have done this, and uh, and they and they and they had reasonable success. Reasonable success. I'm not looking for something perfect. I'm looking for something that's going to take the edge off. Pretty good, except for the large holes in the wall. Yes. Yes. I have fans out there right now. I just, I need something that's going to try to take some of the moisture out of the air. 10 years in serving in, in services, fixing water damage. Yes. I know you have a lot of experience in this. I know you do. I have to do something. I can't stand to be out there. I cannot stand to be out there for more than 20 or 30 minutes. It's that bad. My, my, right now, my woodworking season is two months. I can't go out. In, I can't go out early in the mornings except on the weekends. Move to Arizona. <laughs> that would help. That would help. I, during the week, I I can't. I I get up at five o'clock in the morning and I'm at work by six. It is a dry heat in Arizona, yes. It's very true. Anyway, I didn't want to start this whole stream off with uh, with uh, talk about the wood shop. I wanted to talk about all kinds of stuff. Um, so, have y'all been watching the Olympics? I haven't been watching it religiously, but, uh, but I have been watching a fair bit of it in the evenings. You know, we'll have it on and just kind of kind of see... The Olympics, you know, the 33rd games of the Olympiad. Ugh. Humidity's hot. Well, okay. Define high humidity for Arizona. Define that. 3%? Anyway, so we've been watching the Olympics off and on. That is, that is kind of high for Arizona, I would say. Um, I have a complaint. I have a complaint. Now, gymnastics, track and field, stuff like that, cycling, those are all, those are all cool sports, right? It's fun to watch people who have excelled in their, uh, chosen sports medium to, uh, uh, to to do their to do their performances and it, it's it's awesome you know swimming diving all that good stuff the part that's frustrating me right seeing the swimmers swim real fast cool seeing the gymnast bounce around and do flips and stuff like that cool right I am very much an extreme sports guy like I don't do extreme sports but I like extreme sports like skateboarding. There has been zero, I don't have cable, I just have over the air. There has been zero network coverage of skateboarding. I want to see the skateboard. I want to see it. Diving is cool. Gymnastics are cool. Track and field, cool. But they that they, they do have real sports. They're doing track and field right now. Mm. The Olympics are dying for another reason. I don't feel like getting into that today. The Olympics are fun to watch. And that's all. Killing Blow will be LA. I don't know. The, the LA is what put it limp, put the Olympics really back on the map prior 
to this back in 84. We'll see. We'll see. We will see. I don't really know. I just want skateboarding coverage. I want to be able to watch skateboarding coverage. And that's that. So RB saith, so it shall be. Uh, I have good news. I have good news. Those of you who have been following the channels for a long time know that uh, for many, many moons, many, many, uh, uh, say we have no say. Why? Why don't we have a say? Anyway, those of you that have been around the channel for a long time know that for a long time I was a, 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 a fat bohemian, right? Uh, diabetic. You know, the modern Olympics didn't start until the uh, 1800s. As a matter of fact, I think it was 1896 in France. It was a Frenchman. It wasn't even Greek. It's based on Greek tradition-ish. But, yeah. Anyhow. One of the key indicators one of the key levels that is monitored for diabetics to see how diabetic they are is your A1C level. Uh, without going into too much sciencey stuff, the A1C level is, is basically the amount of sugar in your system average. We'll call it average. I know that's probably oversimplifying, but um, yeah. at my worst, my A1C was eight and a half eight and a half uh, to be considered diabetic you have to have an a1c of 6.5 or higher managed diabetes is anything around seven or less when I went in for my last uh, three month check it tr three month checkup three months ago my A1C was 7.1. So I have technically what is considered to be managed diabetes. I just went in last week and had my three month follow up. And last night the email came that my results were in. So I logged into my patient portal and I looked at my results and my A1C as of Wednesday this week my A1C is 6.5. My A1C is down to 6.5. I am on the verge of no longer being diabetic, like true diabetic. If I can drop one more tenth of a point, I will drop into the pre-diabetic range, which is 6.5.5, I think it's 5.5 to 6.4. Let me check. Let me check. Test results. A1C, 5.7. Pre-diabetic is 5.7 to 6.4. Diabetic is 6.4 or higher. If I can get down below 5.7, 5.6 or less, I will not be diabetic at all. Not even pre-diabetic. So, yay. Super excited. That's what I wanted to lead off with today. 
next year this time I'll be training for the Olympics. Maybe the Senior Olympics. Next year this time I'll be ready. I'll be seriously thinking about retirement. Next year this time. Paralympics with you. <laughs> yes. Yes. What would my event be? Uh, is there a is there a wheelchair golf that they play? Recliners. <laughs> a friend of mine from high school and I, we just came up with an Olympic sport. It's, uh, uh, it involves beanbags. So you've got freestyle beanbags. You've got uh, endurance beanbag. You, you know, uh, you've got um, interpretive beanbag. Um, you've got uh, beanbag luge. That's a winter sport. Um, <laughs> he made a post on Facebook the other day that said the only thing that's stopping him from competing, competing in the Olympics is the fact that he can't get out of the beanbag chair. I was like, wait a minute, let's think about this. <laughs> Woodwork disco. Okay. Yeah, let's think about this. Beanbag Olympics. I'm in. I'm in. You sent pics? Internet. Discord. Oh, I gotta update Discord. Why can't Discord on Linux just update? Why can't Discord just update? Why do I have to download a dev package every time I want to update freaking Discord? And then I got to put in my password. Huh. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Survivor game, survival games in the Olympics? Sure. Count you in for the beanbag Olympics? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm all for this. I am, I am all for this. Okay, now we can launch Discord again, and now it will update because I updated the new dev package, and it will eventually open. Oh, here it comes! Yay! Okay, espresso, food and drink. Uh, okay, that's not it. Woodworking chat. Uh. Cool. Yeah, that's a nice doorway. That turned out to be a nice doorway. Load-bearing wall, sure. So you had to put in a header and everything, too. Load-bearing wall, and they just cut a hole in it? Ouch. That could have been bad. That could have been bad. Well, it's good that they had somebody that they could call, you know? And it's good that you were able to get over there and help them get it fixed up. It truly is. It truly is. You could have just let the hall, you could have just let the house fall down. Could have. I wouldn't have. I'd have went and helped fix it. I guess I don't talk to you guys about stuff like that. <laughs> Usually when people call me, I will drop everything and go help them. 14 hours? Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Ooh, 14 hours to fix that hole? 
I'm guessing most of that was putting in the header, huh? Took you till one o'clock in the morning to get it fixed up, get to get home. Dang. Well, that is unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Wow. 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 So, let's see, what else did I want to talk about today? First 10 hours, getting things to save it, uh, stop the damage, yeah, sure. I My guess would be that putting Putting a header in was probably, oof, man, I, I can't even imagine trying to put a header in there. Just goes to show you guys, if you ever want to do work on your house, make sure you know which walls are load bearing. None of the interior walls in my house are load bearing. None of them. I have trusses. So the ceiling above my head right now are floor trusses to hold up the first floor of the house. And then my roof is also trusses, uh, roof trusses. So none, none of the, none of the walls inside my house <coughs> are, are load bearing, which is nice. Because if you don't like it, you can just change it. It doesn't hurt anything. You got a lot of work to do, but it's nice. It is good to have contacts. I need a contact right now. I need a contact right now. We've talked about this before. Um, my wife and I were talking about it last night, and that is the, the dirt that we need for the backyard. I need a contact for a or a, a, a skid steer or a bobcat or you know something like that yeah uh, yeah look for cables first power cables and such yeah that would have been bad i i'm sure you do have a contact i know where i can get a tractor i can get a tractor with a bucket on it i just don't have a way to get it here But yeah, I need a probably a couple of dump trucks worth of dirt and and a and something to push the dirt around with. And I know you're going to say use a shovel, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Anyway, so back to this dehumidifier thing. Will it not help at all? Is it, should I just not try and just suffer with it? Cause it sounds like m most of you are saying that that's like, it's just, it's a fool's errand to try and. It's a fool's errand to just, to just try to do this. I just, I want to be able to spend time in my wood shop and I can't, I can't. You can, but. I do have kids. I, I do have kids. And, and yes, they are going to help. They are, they are going to help. But have have any have any of you tried to move a dump truck full of dirt? A drum, a dump truck's load of dirt by hand? Have any of you done that? I know you have. It's Trissy, I know you have. I've done it too. It's not like it's I I no. <laughs> no. I think that I think that having your kids 
do work like that. Um, I think that having your kids do work like that can be a valuable experience, but I also know that my kids have no desire to go into a field of work where that would even be a thing. I, I just, I know that. And so why do that to them? You know? Maybe that sounds soft. Maybe that sounds like I've, I've made them soft. But why put them through that? By the way, is Strissy just resubbed again? He did that right before the stream started. It's Trissy. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, that's good. Why'd you scream no at me? The only the only contact you don't have is uh, bricklayer. I, I, man, I used to know. So back when I lived up north, I was in construction and I had contacts for all of that. I had carpenters and plumbers and HVAC guys and, and, and block layers. Uh, sounds like I'm being a good dad. Thanks, Road. I'm not being soft. Good. I'm glad to I'm glad to hear I'm glad to hear y'all say that. We have had to uh have we have had to have a family meeting this week though. And most of the people in the house are have become quite comfortable. They got they got really used to me being here a lot with the whole um COVID nineteen thing, right? Pandemic working from home and all that. That's basically over. Um, the company that I work for now basically now expects us to be in the office every day except for if we have appointments or other things that we have to be remote to do you know like like the day that I had to have my septic tank pumped out they were fine with me being home to, to, to take care of that uh, but the expectation is that we're in the office every day well everybody in the house got used to me being here and when I was here I would just I would just go and do stuff you know I would I'd work for a little while and then I'd go run a load of dishes in the dishwasher or I'd do a load of laundry or I'd go out and run the, uh, run the, the, the lawnmower around the yard a time or two, you know, and now I'm back at work 50 plus hours a week and people are struggling to keep things picked up. And so we had to, had to have a little meeting this, this week, a couple nights ago. Tried the air fryer. Uh, we didn't make anything fancy with it. We just made some uh, made some some tater tots, potato puffs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but they turned out so good. Oh, they turned out so good. They turned out so good. I think we're gonna make fish fillets in it today. I think we're gonna make fish fillets in it today. Instead of turning on the oven and heating up the entire freaking house, I think we're gonna make fish fillets in the air fryer today. That should be good. Yeah, we got, uh, so I got these points. We, we get these recognition points at work and uh, it's called perks at work. Um, and so you, you know, you do a good thing, your boss recognizes you and gives you a handful of points or whatever. And I had been storing mine up for a while and I ended up with eh, a couple, two or 300 of them. And uh, heard a rumor that they might be going away I was like, eh, I should probably look and see what I was. I wanted to save them up because there was a nice uh, full body digital camera that I was looking at. But it was like 1,500 or 15,000 points. I can't remember. It was a lot. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about that, Estrissi. Make chicken in it? Yes, I was thinking about making chicken in it, too. But we'll talk about that, Estrissi, about the uh, about office space in in Denmark. Um, I know why my company is doing it. 
and 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 I'll tell you why. But uh, uh, so these points, I was looking through the rewards of what you can get, and I saw this air fryer. And my wife and I had been talking about getting an air fryer forever. So we got a Hamilton Beach five quart, five point eight quart uh, air fryer, and uh, and we finally used it yesterday. It turned out so good. The other thing that I got, I had, I needed a new pair of uh, a new pair of earbuds because um, my other earbuds were not working anymore. So I got got these. I got some JBLs. They work really good. They have noise canceling in them, so they'll help in the shop. Help with. Uh, decibel protection and such but uh, back to Astrissi's point it says funny how you're getting uh, get, going back to the office over 30% of office space in Denmark are closed down because it's easy to like 30 to let 30% work from home yes no cable so I'm not a fan mm. yeah Prior to the pandemic, my company decided that they were going to build a brand new office building. And they were going to consolidate three, 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 three different area office spaces into one. So they built a brand new building that is that will that will accommodate 10,000 employees and then the pandemic hit and they hadn't even moved in yet so we had this brand new 10,000 employee space that no one was in like zero people were in it and so then when the restrictions when the when the when the restrictions started to uh, become less and less. They were like, okay, well, let's go to a rem let's go to a, a a hybrid package. We'll we'll go from a hundred percent remote to mixed. You know, uh, you're going to be expected to be in the office two days a week. So we did that for about a year. Did that for about a year, and then they said, well. This is working out okay, but we need to have more face-to-face -face time with our employees. We need to be able to, to just walk down the hall and have a meeting. And I'm like, why? Just call me. If you need something, just call me, right? So in so now, so then they said, okay, now you got to be three days in the office. Music stopped. Uh, you got to be three days in the office. Now, here at the training center, which is not part of our corporate office structure, um, which is what our, our main building in downtown Atlanta is, uh, but down here at the training center, we're expected to be there five days a week. And I would say that in 2025, that we will not have any remote working employees anymore, and that it will be 100% in office all the time. That building that we built that houses or that can accommodate 10, roughly 10,000 employees currently has about 3,500 in it. About 3,500 in it. I'm not sure why that stopped. We'll try it again. There we go. Twelve hour day, seven day work weeks, probably. It's being used. I was just there. I had to go up there one day this week. I had to go up there on Thursday for a meeting. 
It's a nice building. It's a beautiful building. I wouldn't want to spend my entire week up there. I am already working on my retirement plan. I have, uh, I have been thinking about my retirement, my exit strategy. I've been thinking about that for a couple of years now. In order to retire from the railroad here in the States and get full benefits, to get full benefits, you have to be 60 years old and you have to have 30 years of service. If you don't have either of those, then you take a you take a reduction in your benefit. You'll take me as in as a refugee. Um so in about 8 years I will be old enough to retire. But I won't have enough years of service to retire. I'll be too short. But I think I'm going to do it anyway. I think I'm going to retire when I turn 60. I haven't 100% committed to that yet because there is a variable here, and that is my spouse's retirement is... Uh, is based on my retirement, but it's also based on her age. And my wife is younger than me. So if she's not 60, then she doesn't qualify for her portion of the retirement benefits. And we would have to wait a few years for her to get to the level where she would be able to draw her benefit. That's the only variable in there that I'm truly concerned about. If it were if it were just me or if she were older, it'd be a no-brainer. I'd go at 60 100% and just take the reduction on those two on those two missing years of service because I got other stuff from other places that um, that would offset that easily. Um but the fact that she is 5 years younger than me and that her retirement benefit is significant when she retires or when she is eligible to draw retirement. That's significant. Um, as a retired railroad spouse, you draw 48% additional retirement of what your spouse draws. So. Let's let's say that let's say that my monthly retirement benefit is ten thousand dollars. My wife would draw forty eight hundred just for being married to me, for being you know for being a railroader. So it's kind of worth waiting for. But even if I retire, even if I retire. At sixty, at, at sixty-two, and thirty years of service, we still have to wait a few more years for her to get hers. In order for her to get hers, I'd have to go until I'm sixty-seven. No, I'd have to go until I was sixty-five because she's have to, she'd have to be sixty. So I'd have to go until I'm sixty-five, and I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that so anyway but yeah darth it's not it's not bad oh it used to be great by the way if you were a railroader married to another railroader get this you would draw and i know some people that have done this they stopped doing this back around 2010 or so um and and then said basically if you hired after if you hired after 2000, then you no longer could, you could no longer do this. But if you were two railroaders married to each other. So I know, I know a guy and his wife, she was a clerk someplace and, uh, and he was in management, right? So for their retirement, he gets to draw his railroad retirement and half of his spouse's. She gets to draw her railroad retirement and 
half of his. So, so they're getting three checks a month for retirement benefits. 65 is the normal retirement age for, for you here, for you there in Germany. If I had to work, if I had to work outside of the railroad in order for me to qualify for just standard social security retirement, I'd have to work until I'm 67. My, my age group is, is at, is 67 years old. The generation right behind me is 71. I think it's 71. Same in Denmark, you just stopped early. Yeah. I, I don't see an issue with it either. I would, uh, like, I would absolutely, if I could get that, I would absolutely take it. <laughs> I know a couple other folks um, who work at the shop that I used to work at. Uh, there's a couple other couples. Um and they don't qualify for that. If you're married uh, anymore, if you're married to another railroader, you don't get to you, you don't get to take your you don't get to take half of your spouse's benefits. You get yours, they get theirs, and that's it. They you don't qualify for the extra fifty percent. Well, forty eight percent, but um, yeah, they stop doing that. But man, whew, could you imagine? The dude was. Dude was over dude was over 70 when I met him. He's got to be over 80 now. Uh and him and his wife just built the biggest house. And they're old and decrepit and retired, right? They just built the biggest house I have ever seen. And paid for it. Essentially paid cash for it cuz they're just they're rolling in it. And he took an early he took an early buyout. Um, the railroad was trying to took an early buyout. He was trying to, they were, the railroad was trying to reduce their headcount a little bit. And so they offered him, they offered him a box full of money and said, here, just take this and go home. And he's like, yeah, I'm out. See ya. Um, so he got that too. Your neighbor just stopped working and he's 90. Wow. My father-in-law, my father-in-law still works quite a bit and he's in his 80s he's in his 80s oh he's not mm, let's see i think he is 80 i think he's 80 this year i can't remember i, can't remember. I think he's 80 this year anyway yeah I love talking to you guys about stuff like this. This, uh, this is awesome. Of course, the dream is, is that, you know, some of this stuff that we do online blows up and uh, then I don't have to work anymore at all. Like not work, work. Dad's 72 and still busy. Good, good for him. Do I have any plastic on rolls? Um, define. Like, what do you mean? Are you talking about plastic? Plastic sheets? Uh, no. I don't think so. Why? I need to figure out this whole woodworking, vinyl cutting, 3D printing, laser engraving, eventually CNC routing thing. Could, ta could tape it to the ceilings and floors of the workshop. I could do that, but I'm not going to. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Hey, 
there we go. Now I can see the songs. Sweet. So I could I could make my room airtight with the plastic sheets and then lower the humidity. Sure, sure I could do that. What's the, okay? Uh, what's the best way? What's the best way? Is there a best way? Oh, make sure you send that over on Discord too, Estrissi. fryer chicken. Oh, that looks delicious. That looks delightful. No, you're lazy. Fine then. How long? How long? 375. Overcook if they're small chicken breasts, seven to ten minutes, mediums ten to twelve, larger twelve to sixteen. Okay. You're role playing me. Thanks. Thanks, man. You're the best. You are the best. You're simply the best. Better than all the rest. serenaded you hope you enjoyed oh uh back to my whole diabetes thing so i said i got my um what fish has ah, just frozen fish fillets we're not connoisseurs of fish around here we just do fish fillets on sunday nights um I don't eat them. I, I don't eat anything that comes out of the water because A, fish poop in water, and B, I'm allergic to a lot of quote unquote seafood. And so I just try not, I just stay away from it. So I eat a lot of chicken, a lot of turkey. Some, sometimes I'll have a, 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 a steak or, or a burger. See the food. Yes, see the food. Uh, but back to my diabetes thing, uh, with that lower A1C, that 6.5 A1C, I am actually going to get to stop taking one of my medications. Uh, I take a, I take metformin twice a day, and I'm going to be able to stop taking that, which is awesome. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It'll be great. It's my Scottish accent. Um, I've been trying to design a lot of basic furniture. You're going to pay a vacation for your two kids? Why? Why? You need to, you need to get them out of the house or something? Else is on my, what, what else is on my mind? We've only been streaming for Yeah, I'm not sure what you're saying there. Sorry. Oh, vaccinations? Oh, vaccinations. I bet it's vaccinations, isn't it? Okay, gotcha. I... I have one, eh, two, two, one.
Yeesh. You got your rabies shot. You afraid you're going to bite somebody and give them rabies? I've got one more. I got one more kid that I got to get that HPV shot. We did it for one of the older kids. The other, the oldest one, I think it's too old now. Um, human papillomavirus. It causes certain types of cancer and um, it's a it's a virus that young people can get and then it cre and it can cause cancers later in life uh, those of you that watch critical role sam regal uh just had a there's a re if you if you've been following um he was missing from Critical Role for a while. The character that he was playing, Fresh Cut Grass, uh, basically exploded himself and saved the party and did a basic, a big hero thing. And then he left for a while. And the reason why he did that was because he had throat cancer. And that throat cancer, they found out that that throat cancer was because he had contracted the HPV virus when he was younger. And you don't know that you have it. Um, so, so yeah, so yeah, I think, uh, if you've got, if you've got kids, uh, how old can you get the HPV vaccine? Oh, okay. Well, that's good. That means that my... Yeah. So, my oldest can get it. Yeah, it's not recommended, but it also says that you can. You can get it if you have other risk factors after you consult with your doctor. Not recommended for people who are pregnant. So my oldest, like we didn't know about the HPV vaccine until it was basically too late. Oh, you're gonna get her shots on her birthday? You mean dad, you? Hey, guess what I got you for your birthday? An injection. <laughs> That's just like me getting freaking COVID for my 50th birthday. Like we were gonna have a party and everything and then we couldn't, stupid COVID. Anyway, but yeah, we our youngest, we need to get we need to get him the vaccine. So probably gonna do that. Probably gonna do that. We need to get him in for a checkup anyway. He just turned 18, it's time for a checkup. So uh uh kids here in the States get it too, but we didn't know about it until after our kids were older than the 11 or 12 years old that it's recommended so but yeah it's 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 one of those ones that's kind of not required but highly highly suggested you know so yeah we have a so we have we have something similar here if you're if you're taking your kids to the doctor regularly then there are certain panels of injections that you get just because of your age right um and and we we did that with all of our kids until they were you know mid teenagers 
the the way that the sh the way that the schools work around here, um, if your kids are school aged and they're going to a public school, then the school requires that you get injections and you have to actually give them your shot record. Um, and we we did that. Our kids weren't in public school, but we still stuck to that schedule, right? Um, but HPV wasn't one that they were requiring at that time. So, yeah. But now that he's, now that he's, now that the youngest is 18, we're going to go ahead and make sure that he's got all of his, and all of his stuff is up to date and all that. So you so you're required to get the vaccines up until you're 21, and then after 21 you can shoot you can opt out. Is that what you're saying? Okay. I mean that's that makes sense. I guess. I guess that makes sense. Is it just me or are the hermits having way too much fun with these new maces in Minecraft? Free dentist until you're 25. We have to carry we have to carry our kids on our insurance until they're 26. We carry our kids on the well, we don't have to. But as a as a young adult, you can you can stay on your parents' insurance until you are 26, and then after that, you can get your own. You can get your own prior to 26 if you got if you get a job that's got good benefits. You can do that. But anyway, anyway, I watched I watched B Dubs's latest Hermitcraft video, the one about not being any good at 121. <laughs> Poor B-dubs. Poor B-dubs. Uh, let's see. Just scrolling through my feed here on, on YouTube. I'm seeing some tech channels that are posting some things about Intel. What's going on with Intel? Covered up to a million and a half. That's pretty good. Level one text. My, uh, Microsoft is killing Windows, featuring Steve from Gamers Nexus. So it's not, so not, so it's not just health insurance. It's like everything. I got gotcha. you. It's full insurance. I got gotcha. you. Ooh, a new PBS Space Time video. Do black holes have to be black? I I don't know about y'all, but. I, I'm secretly a, it's not so secretly now, I am secretly a um, quantum physics uh, buff. Like, I'm not super smart. I don't understand half the stuff they're talking about, but it fascinates me, right? And I love PBS Space Time. So seeing that they have a, a newer video, it came out a couple of days ago and I just haven't scrolled through my feed yet. But seeing that there's another video about black holes, super intrigued. Darth 2? Yeah. Nice. 
Another good channel if you're into sciencey type stuff is Astrum. Y'all, I'm having some trouble. I'm having some trouble deciding what's important to me. I've been trying to get healthy, which means that I've been trying to not sit around a lot. It's not working very well, but I've been trying. Um, I've been trying to lose weight. Ancient aliens. Yeah. Yeah. There's some interesting topics in there. A lot of that is highly speculative, though. I mean, I guess all of quantum physics is highly speculative. Um, trying is better than doing nothing at all. I don't know. Ask Mr. Miyagi. He says, do or do not. There is no... Oh, wait. No, maybe it wasn't... There, no, that was Yoda. Sorry. Do or do not. There is no try. Miyagi said something similar. Right side road. Safe. Left side road. Safe. Middle. Squash. Just like grape. That is true. Yoda did live for a long time by himself. And he was very, very old. Very, very, very old. It's very old. But not decrepit. I don't know who that is. Who is Majagi? Oh, that's Miyagi. Miyagi. M-Y-A-G-I. Miyagi. I miss Pat Morita. I kind of wish Pat Morita would have been around for the new Cobra Kai series, but I understand that it's... I understand why it is what it is. Have you guys been watching Cobra Kai? We watched the the first six episodes of the, the, the final season the last couple of weeks. Pretty good. If you do or don't, you end up living alone. Maybe, I guess. Sure. Well, Miyagi didn't really live alone, though. Once Daniel san came into his life, he was around a lot. On the rookie? Okay. Yeah, Cobra Kai's Cobra Kai's looking Cobra Kai's looking pretty good. I do I do question their logic in this mythical fantasy fictional underground yet highly publicized world tournament um the Saikai Taikai I, eh, I don't know I don't know about the storyline but I understand why they're doing it you know yeah you're, you're not entirely wrong there it's Hollywood. Hollywood's involved, and so logic and reality are not even in consideration. Every car blows up by one bullet. You know, my favorite... Well, my favorite movie to pick apart, because I know so much about it, is uh, Unstoppable, the the train movie. That train movie, Unstoppable, with Denzel Washington and Chris uh, Chris Pratt, that is based on a true story. It is based on a true true story. There was a locomotive that got away from uh, got away from somebody in Ohio on the CSX railway. I will not spoil it for you. We're going to talk about something else. 
Hey, hybrid. Uh, but yeah, the uh, Fast and the Furious in solar cars, probably. Uh, but yeah, this the, the, the movie Unstoppable was based on a true story of a locomotive that got away from its operators. Uh, the, the, the true part of the story is that the operator of the locomotive did leave the unit under power and got down off of the unit to throw his own switch, to, to line his own switch. And in first notch, hauling as many cars as it would, he had plenty of time, but he did trip and fall. And so in the amount of time that it took him to get back up and everything, he missed, he missed the locomotive and he couldn't get back on. So we got this train, this unmanned train rolling through Ohio and, you know, they eventually caught up with it and stopped it and all that. And it, it wasn't nearly as sensational as the movie, but the movie made it very, very sensational. One of the things... <laughs> Hybrid's like, oh, that movie. <laughs> One of the things that happens in that movie is that it show After the guy gets off to, to get down and, and, um, and, and throw his own switch, it, it zooms in on the cab and on the control handles. And there is a there is a, a handle that is your reverser. The reverser picks your forward and reverse direction or it has a center neutral position. Uh, and then there are two other handles, one for, well, one for throttle, one for dynamic brake. And then there are two other handles that are for your automatic and your independent brake. The the scene that it cuts to after he gets out of the cab is that the the throttle handle moves itself. It, he had it in notch one, which is minimal power. And it showed that handle basically move itself down and go into the maximum throttle, which is notch eight. The, uh, there is zero way that that can happen. That can never happen. It can never happen. The other thing that they show in the movie, there's there's two other things that I that I really want to draw attention to, uh, in is is in the movie it showed them put I don't know six or eight, um, <laughs> poltergeist <laughs> yeah maybe. Uh, it shows them put six or eight derailing devices up on the main line. Uh, derailing device is exactly what its name implies. It is a device that is purposely there to get a train off of the tracks. Uh, it's a protective device. So you'll put a you'll put a derail up anytime you're gonna be working on a piece of track that you don't want equipment to be able to come into. Um, but they put six or eight of these up on the, on the main line. A, it's against the law to put a derail on the main line. It's against the law. You cannot put a derail on the main line. Uh, and then two, uh, at the speed that that train was going, which according to the movie was 70 miles an hour, give or take, um, if they would have put one derail on the rail, then the scene that you saw where it just blows them, uh, if you it blows them off of the uh, uh, off of the track, that probably would have happened if it would have been one. But they put like six or eight. So with six or eight derails on the on the main line, it's going to take the train off the track. It did not. They just It just blew all of them off the main line and it just kept on going. Okay, that's number two. Number three, and this is my favorite part of the movie. Number three, there's this big curve uh, around a major metropolitan city that the train has to go around. And that train, that curve has to be taken at a certain speed or it will derail. It shows the train go around the curve. And you know how in the movies they want to make it look more fantastic than it actually is. And so they'll get the car up on two wheels, right? And then they and then the driver is able to handle it back down and get back on four wheels and away they go, right? Well, they did the same thing with this train. I'm here to tell you 100% that if a locomotive or freight cars get up onto two wheels instead of down on all of them, or just get up onto all the wheels on one side instead of down on all of them, 
you are not, there is no there is no way yeah it will absolutely turn over there is no way that that is coming back so bravo hollywood for entertaining us but as someone who is in the in the railroad business it ain't happening it ain't not happening not happening at all there was also there was also a scene in there where they were talking about a a, a, a gp40 a gp40 or a gp50 locomotive and talking about how it makes 6000 horsepower of, of of tractive effort those units make like 3500 Mrs. RB is chatting to me. It's Mrs. RB1. She sent me an image. What image did she send me? Yeah, that's the other thing. The way that trains are made, the wheels will just fall off, right? They're, especially on freight cars, the only thing that holds the, the, the car to the wheels is gravity. There are no mechanical fasteners under there at all. Locomotives do have fasteners to keep the to keep the traction motors in place, but even they're not reliable. Like if you get a locomotive turned over, you're probably going to lose the wheels. Cuz traction motors, oof, traction motors. Each each one of those wheel sets underneath a locomotive weighs I don't know, 20 right around 20,000 pounds just the wheels. And most locomotives have either four or six of them. And they weigh 20,000 pounds a piece. So you're looking at, you know, around 100,000 pounds of just wheels. You know? Just traction motors of about 100,000 pounds. And when you think about it, the your standard... Your standard six-axle locomotive weighs 500,000 pounds. Standard locomotive weighs half a million pounds. You know, that's that's a lot. When, when one-fifth of the weight comes from the wheels, that's a lot. I could talk about locomotives a lot. Would that interest you guys? Would that interest you guys? Oh, Mrs. RB. Again. Uh... It's Trissy says one minute. Oop. What now? They're starting to build my shopping list. I got to go to the grocery store after the stream today. They're absolutely going to be blowing. Oh, yeah. They're absolutely blowing me up. Uh, Wikipedia. No like trains. You saw one derail when you were a kid. I've seen many derail. Okay, so you're talking, you're talking um, passenger type stuff. I'm talking, I'm talking freight rail. I've seen a lot of derailments. 
I've seen stuff happen real time. I've seen fatalities. Don't use cargo a lot there anymore. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think there's I think there's still a place for long haul uh, long haul rail service or freight. Um, but you've got to have You, you've got to you've got to have a reason for it, you know. Getting getting large quantities of commodities from the east coast to the west coast of the United States, not viable. It's 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 just not viable to do that by uh, by truck. It is very much viable to do that uh, by rail. But there's a lot of there, there's a lot of rail traffic. There's a lot of rail traffic that we probably could do differently but as a railroad employee you know i'm all for keeping it on the rails you know yeah you guys are kind of you guys are very much landlocked over there you know you're you're surrounded on three sides by water like you said and and your country's not that big right it's not that big it's big it's it's decent sized but it's not gigantic you know so it is not as inconvenient for you, uh, for you all to to deliver large quantities of uh, of stuff uh, by truck. And you're the gateway to the north, but still, even even still, you get a bunch. If you get a bunch of shipping containers in, put them on a truck and run them around. You know. If you need to get, if you need to get stuff to Europe, then go to a Europe, go to a European port. You can't do that. Oh, okay. Oh. Oof. I have no doubt that the train system, that the the rail system, well, uh, uh, mm, passenger service system is better than the U.S. Hundred percent, hundred percent. You guys do a much better job with passenger rail than we do. Our passenger rail system is a joke. And part of that might be because we run them on the same rails as our freight system in many, in many places. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can, I can very much, I can very much get on board with what you're saying there about, about our rail system. I'm not going to badmouth the rail system here too bad. Not the freight rail system. But you're 100% right. Our passenger rail system is a joke. It's a joke. It, yeah, 100%. Like, explain, riddle, riddle me, riddle me this. Riddle me this, Batman. I was I was talking to a I was talking to a student I was talking to a student that was where were they coming from They looked at getting a train ticket to come down here for their for their training class cuz they didn't they didn't want to drive if they didn't have to they were looking at getting a train ticket to come down here from, I can't remember where it was going to be, but it was going to end up being, you know, if they would have, if the drive would have been somewhere between 12 and 16 hours, maybe less than that. I can't re I can't remember, but the train trip, the train trip was going to take them three days. 
Why? The, the train trip was going to take them somewhere just shy of three days. And that's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. If I want to, you know, it, and I could, and, and I can drive in, you know, a third of the time, less than a third of the time, that's, that's ridiculous. Ah. <sighs> Air fried chicken breasts. Yep, we're definitely gonna do that one of these nights. I'll get five chicken breasts and there we go. Mrs. RB was talking about wanting to change up our menu for the summer anyway because some of the things that we make, we make in the oven. And you, you heat the oven up to 400 degrees and it it makes the rest of the house super hot right so correct correct that is a hundred percent correct the United States is 50 individual states and Europe is a dozen roughly a dozen individual countries, maybe 15 or 16. I can't remember exactly how many European countries there are, but you got France and Spain and Belgium and, and Germany and Poland and, and you know, so, so yeah, a dozen, 16, 20, I don't know, 44 plus, really? There's 44 European countries? I didn't think there would be that many. Go going to visit upon the skin chicken. I think you may be misinterpreting that a little bit, Darth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In a limited sense around Baltimore, Washington, New York City, Boston corridor is the only partially functioning U.S. passenger rail system. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. There are people that take that um, 51 countries and five territories. I didn't realize that. I mean, I knew that I guess when I'm thinking of countries in, in Europe, I, I'm thinking of the, of the big ones, you know? Uh, your, your Scandinavian countries, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, um, your mainland European countries, Germany, France, Spain, Italy, Great Britain is European, but they're not on the continent, you know? Well, they're on the continent, but they're not on the they're not mainland so but yeah i guess there are a lot of smaller countries like you know netherlands there's yeah don't start with me Estrisi. don't start with me lots wow that makes a lot of difference The UK is three countries of its own. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, I guess that's true. Hmm. It's funny. It's funny how... You have countries that are just a town. Wow. Wow. But we're 50 individual states, you know, and, and each state, each state, in some cases, uh, states are roughly the same size as some of the countries in Europe, uh, especially states like Texas and Alaska uh, and uh, California. Well, California, California is technically kind of small landmass wise yeah it's tall but it's narrow but you know some of the, some of the states would fit nicely as countries in a more European structure I guess so yeah 
But Diamond, to your point, yeah, that whole northeast corridor up there where you've got high-speed rail and uh, and freight traffic and all of that kind of functioning together, uh, yeah, that's like that's if you're thinking about U.S. rail, like that's the place that you need to look at to find out if it works or not. And our system is functional, but not. It's functional, but it's not great. And there are people that rely on those trains to and from Boston and New York and, and all, every day. Because if all of those people were to drive, you think traffic in New York City is bad now? Holy balls. Hmm. <clears throat> what else is on what else is going on here? Why Edinburgh is split in two. You may want to watch that later. Nothing else there I want to, nothing else there that's curious to me right now. That is true, Vatican City. <clears throat> Vatican City is a country. That is true. Uh, no, we actually didn't talk about Intel. What's been going on with Intel? I keep seeing stuff pop up in my feed about certain things going on with Intel, and uh, and I haven't I haven't clicked on any of the videos. So, yeah, what's the scoop? What the scoop? They keep burning. So Intel chips are catching on fire. Great. I don't have an Intel chip, so I don't really care, but... Uh, thanks, Darth. That means a lot to me. Darth said, I, th I, I do want to say congrats on your A1C. That is major. Yes, it is. I, I would... When, when I went to the doctor's office on Wednesday... And we were, and me and the, uh, and, and me and the doc were talking. I was like, she, she said, so how do you think you've been doing? I said, like, I don't, I don't, I don't feel any different. I don't, I, yeah, maybe I, maybe I feel a little bit more energetic, maybe. Um, but I don't, I don't feel like I've made a lot of progress. And then those results came back and I went from 7.1 to 6.5. I was like, what, what? Lower is better, by the way. Um, Intel is in a bit of a pickle. Manufacturing microcode issues causing much higher temperatures and voltages. I did see that uh, somebody put out a video. Yeah, it was level one Linux. Uh, the Intel has put out a patch um, for their voltage monitor. Turbostat C, let's add a voltage monitor patch for Intel CPU. Actually, I don't know that Intel put out the patch. I think somebody else made a patch for it. It's not helping, you say. Okay. The Gamers Nexus video is worth watching? Okay. Is that the one that that gamers nexus is is it an actual gamers nexus video or is it the one that he did with uh level one techs windows tried to make a patch okay i also saw that uh 
Paul's Hardware did a video about the 14900K being probably self-destructive. I'm guessing that's the same. It's an actual Gamers Nexus video. Okay, I'll check it out. They're all kind of saying the same thing. You know, so... Yeah, I guess. Ooh, the next space stations. Scott Manley put out a video 13 days ago that talked about the next space station. So where will the astronauts go after the ISS is destroyed? That could be interesting. Intel, Intel, and Intel, wow, words are hard today. Intel recall the line of chips. Okay. So what do we think the problem? What, do, uh, yeah, let's, uh, Intel recall. According six days ago, according to PC Gamer, Intel has no plans to recall those crashing 13th and 14th gen chips. Game Rant, again, six days ago, Intel is not recalling problematic CPUs, so... Well, that's great for the EU. Issues can affect anything that's over 65 watts or less than. Yeah, less than 65 watts. Wow. <laughs> I don't have a drinking problem. Greater than 60, uh, greater than 65 watt, 13th or 14th gen. Okay. So does that have a, is, is that because of like overclocking or is that just running normal? That's normal. Okay. Do any of you have one of these 13th or 14th gen chips? I do not. I'm running an AMD Ryzen 5. I think it's a Ryzen 5. We talk about this all the time. You have one that you're testing? Okay. System info. Ryzen 5. Oxidation and bad internal microcode. So oxidation is causing for poor heat transfer, right? Or higher than normal heat generation through the through the conductors. Sure. Smells funny when it gets hot. I bet it does. I'll bet it does. That is unfortunate. That is absolutely unfortunate. Oxidation on the chip, okay. Also unfortunate. How do you get oxidation? Well, I mean, I know how you get oxidation, but. So yeah, that, that was gonna be That was going to be my my next point. If if you do have one of these 13th or 14th gen chips and they do crash, they do have a problem. 
you can't fix it. The only fix is a new chip, right? So is Intel gonna pay for these chips? Or are they gonna make you buy another chip and thus make people go, hmm, maybe I'll just buy a Ryzen instead. Of course, if you die that, you do that, then you probably gotta get a new motherboard. Again, that's great for the EU, but there's more, there's more computer population than just the EU. Intel has denied some early RMAs with the issue. Oh. Mm. Again, that's great for the EU. <laughs> that doesn't help the rest of us. I would guess. I think it's the FTC, Federal Trade Commission. I would guess that the FTC would probably get involved on this if it if it came to it. Um, for folks here in the States. Look, Biden's only got, what, six months left in his, in his term. <laughs> He's got to do something to make himself seem relevant because <laughs> he hasn't done a whole lot. And I'm not making fun of the, I'm, I'm not making light of, I'm not trying to make it sound like I'm anti-Democrat or pro-Republican or anything like that. I just know that I have not been satisfied with Joe Biden's presidency. And, and if he could help the gamers out, boy, oh boy. Uh, Canada has, re has return rights. Okay. Okay. I'm curious. I am curious to find out, you know, like who is going to get satisfaction out of this and who isn't, you know? There, you know, there may, there may be, well, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to get into worldwide law. I want to get into worldwide law. I do, I do have a soft spot in my heart for national autonomy, you know? Because in, in some cases, what works for one country doesn't work for another. So, I mean, I'm just, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Again, not trying to say that one system is better than another, but. Yeah. Anybody who doesn't notice the slow performance degradation will be affected because they won't know to RMA. Yeah, that's a good point. Like it, it's damaged, but it's not damaged enough to suffer noticeably, you know? Or you just figure, well, you know, I'm just running a lot of stuff, so it must, you know, I just must be taxing the system a little bit when in fact you're not. Well, without getting into that too much, Estrisi, you know, I, I don't, I don't think you're wrong. I think certain global safety standards are not a terrible idea. They're not a bad idea, but who's going to enforce it, you know? And that gets back into that whole realm of national autonomy. Um, but you're not, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So so Intel has got problems. Now, here's the question. Does AMD have problems too? Because I've noticed something. I've noticed something. We have entered we have entered a period in our in our we have entered a period of time in our history 
the making of our history, we'll put it that way, where we have entered an idiocracy. We have dumbed things down so much. And a couple, I've talked with a couple of personally close people about this, um, of varying political alignments, social alignments, uh, et cetera. And, and everybody's kind of noticing the same thing that we just, we don't have a standard anymore or that the same, or that the standard is, is too, the, the threshold for the standard is too low. Like if you can meet this standard, then you're good. When in fact that standard needs to be up here. Um, and a lot of that might have something to do with what's going on with, with Intel at the moment. Um, I, and I think, I think you're probably going to see, I think you're probably going to see in the, in the fairly near future. Um, I think you're going to see that there's going to be a revival. I feel like maybe we'll see a revival in that people are like, you know what, this is dumb. We have allowed things to get this way because we've wanted to make things. I gotta be careful how I say this. I feel like, I feel like the, the point where we have gone wrong is the point that we've gone wrong is that we have made it so that you don't have to be great at anything anymore. I might be wrong. We used to have people who were very highly specialized in what they did, whether it was an auto mechanic or a carpenter or a doctor. I mean, you know what you call the person who graduates the bottom of their class from medical school, right? Call them a doctor. They are a doctor. They have completed their medical school training. Are they the best doctor? No, they're not. So where's that line? Where's that line? And yes, you're right, Anvil. We do, Diamond, we do still have experts in, in, in their fields. But I think, I don't think we have as many. Some people are naturally going to gravitate towards being specialists in what they do. I'm a specialist in what I do. Uh, when, it, when it comes to training and employee development, I'm a, I'm a specialist. That's, that's what I do. I know how, I know how to build a better, well, let's just face it. I know how to build a better railroader. Um, but even in my chosen field, the standard for what a good railroader looks like has been dumbed way down, way down. So yes, we still have experts and we still need to listen to those experts. And the problem that we have is that we're, that a lot of times we don't listen to our experts. We, we don't, we don't let our experts decide the, the standard. When the demand of a for highly specialized exceeds the available worker pool of applicants, what can a company do? That is a great question, Diamond. That is a great question. That is a question for the ages. Because again, we're we're having the same problem. We're having the same problem where I work right now. We need people who are uh, who are meticulous, who are detail oriented, who uh, are analytical, and we're not necessarily finding a lot of those people. Um, you're a bard, you're specialized in more than one field. See, I'm a mage. I'm a wizard. I'm a wizard. Specialized in one thing. I 
I am not a jack of all trades, master of none. Train themselves, do it better, give them better work hours. I agree with the better work hours. I don't agree with the train them themselves. Some people Your choice is to go without or roll the dice. Yeah. Balance of work and free time helps. Yes. Um, I will absolutely go with uh, go with the give them better work hours. I just don't know your chaos wizard yet. I just don't know how you do that. We 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 live in a world where we have a twenty four hour clock, and that twenty four hour clock. Uh, divides nicely into three hour, three eight hour shifts, um, and we can't get people to see past that. It doesn't have to divide nicely. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to divide nicely. We don't have to work eight, five or five eight hour days to get forty hours in a week. We don't have to do that. We could work. We could work four ten hour days and get forty hours in a work week. And by doing that, and by doing that, we get overlap. We get overlap, overlap from one shift to the next. One of the biggest problems that we have on the railroad is that when one shift is coming in, the other shift is leaving. And there's no crossover between the two. The two, they don't talk to each other. And so if you've got a project that is in the middle of something, there's no turnover. There's no conversation about, hey, this is where we left off. This is what we've run into. This is what we were going to do next. And the people that three tens and two fives, that's not terrible either. That still gives, that still puts people to work five days a week with a weekend. Hmm. Hadn't thought about three tens, two fives. But there's no there's no communication. That that's the problem that we experience. You know, back when I was working in the field, I would show up for my shift. Um, I would show up for my shift, and I would be given an assignment, and I would go out there, and you know, I would have to figure out where they where the shift before me left off. Sometimes that was easy. Sometimes if it was like routine maintenance stuff, you have lines that you sign off saying that you've done that routine maintenance item. Um, but yeah, it's like if you're in the middle of a big project and figuring out where people left off, you need that overlap, right? Uh, Darth said he did that three tens and two fives with Microsoft when he worked for him. That's good. Diamond Anvil also wants me to hydrate because I've been talking a lot. So cheers. Three day work weeks, 12 hours, 12 hour shifts, but paid for 37. So, <clears throat> hmm. I, in order to come up with a better system, in order to come up with a better system, we're going to have to break, the, I think we're going to have to break the system that we have. And there's a lot of people that are scared of that. If you look at if you look at any company and most I would say most of the employees that work for any company they've built their financial life around an employee working x number of hours x number of days period and in most cases that that X number of hours over X number of days is eight hours for five days for a total of 40 hours per week. And the other problem that we have, and I know this is a problem that we have at the railroad, is that everything is contractual. The working agreements that we have with all of our skilled 
craft laborer, electricians, machinists, freight car repairmen, boiler makers, carpenters, laborers, all of the contract language says that you must have five consecutive work days of eight hours and you must have two consecutive off days. And that's in the contract. So we can't just change it. It has to go through negotiations. Um, and there are some people that are like, yeah, let's do that. And then there are other people like, well, if we do that, that's going to create some chaos and we need to be fluid here. We need to keep things running at certain ways. And, you know, and if it doesn't work out right, you know, as if I'm on the receiving end of the pay for that, it doesn't work out right. And then, and then I miss my mortgage payment. Who's going to help me with that? You know, there's a lot of fear around uncertainty and change. Uh, I wouldn't say it's never been like that there. Maybe not like that in Denmark. But I do know that a lot of the... Uh, I do know a lot of the uh, working agreements, trade labor working agreements that we have here are very similar to working agreements that they would have in, say, uh, Great Britain in the UK. Because a lot of these, a lot of these working rules that we're that we're working with, you know, they were, you don't think so? Okay. Okay. Broke that up in the 90s? Okay. Is it working for them? Because if it's working for them, then great. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how the UK economy and worker rules compare to the United States right now. There's a, and there are also a lot of people in the United States that work under that work under contractual agreements that are happy. Dude, I got I get eight hours a day, I get forty hours a week. If I go after if I go past eight hours, I get overtime. If I go past forty hours, I get overtime. And I'm guaranteed guaranteed two days off unless I choose to work and there's a lot of people that find very great stability in that and they and they too are afraid to change if you ask them do you want to work more in four days than you do in five days and get three consecutive days off do you want that? A lot of them would say yes, but when it came right down to it, when they when it came down to vote for that contract, they would vote no. And I don't know why that is. I will say this. I work roughly 10 hours a day. There's only one country in the EU that still has a government rule. I don't know what that last word is. Oh, at all. Okay. What country is that? Norway? Okay. Huh. I don't know what the fix is. But I know it's a problem. don't know what the fix is, but I know it's a problem. That's another good point. There isn't, there's, there's never a simple fix. It's usually a bunch of fixes and they're usually complex. It's a good point. I need to acknowledge that I've done that. Mark is complete. Yes, please. Oh, uh, we're almost out of time, but uh, the plugin, the multi RTMP plugin for OBS, uh, still broken, 
but I did do a little bit more research this week and it does look like more people are noticing that. Um, there is a, there is an OBS problem that's keeping some plugins from loading. Um, and so I am still an IBEW member. I am 100% still an IBEW member, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. I am on travel status from my home local in Indiana right now. I can go back anytime I want. Uh, so over here, you can't be a member of two unions unless one of them is a non-skilled labor union. So like uh, we have uh, one of the unions that we use is the, um, the IBFO, the International Brotherhood of Firemen and Oilers. Uh, they are a, considered to be a non-skilled craft. Um, so you can be a member of the IBFO and a skilled trade like the IBEW, the IAM, the BRC, um, BRC's Brotherhood, Brotherhood of Railway Carmen. Uh, IAM is International Aeronautics and Machinist Union. Um, yeah. But you can't be a machinist and an electrician at the same time. You can't be a carman and a boilermaker at the same time. We have, we basically have one big union in the United States, and that's the AFL-CIO. Uh, and then they branch down into specializations from there. So I know that the IBEW is part of the AFL-CIO. I know that the Teamsters, Teamsters is not AFL-CIO, are they? I can't remember. Teamsters might be the other big one. And Teamsters are generally like the truckers. Um, anyway, I don't know. But we, we don't have a large number of big unions. UAW, auto workers, uh, in the construction trades, you've got a couple of big ones. You've got plumbers and pipe fitters, you've got um, electrical workers, you've got carpenters, you've got bricklayers. And then there are some other smaller ones like insulators, glazers, Stuff like that. Railroads have a lot. The railroads have a lot of unions. And that's another, that's probably part of our problem too, is that we have so many different union contracts that we have to uh, adhere to that sometimes it's hard to come up with a contract that works for everybody, you know? Oh. Ah, but great conversation today everybody i had a i had a blast talking to you guys today we talked about some good stuff we figured out we, we we figured out that intel's got problems everybody knew that already um we talked about my health which thank you all for the support on that i appreciate it i know that uh it's been something that um it's been something that we've been talking about on this channel for a while and, and hopefully I'm on the on the right track. So thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I do appreciate it very much. Uh, next week we'll be back in Minecraft again. I got some ideas. I've actually been thinking about recording a vanilla episode. Most of our unions over here have no strike clauses. Like we've taken the teeth of, we've taken the teeth away from a lot of the unions. Like they can they can vote down a contract, but then they just basically have to keep working until an arbiter comes in and settles the contract, or the president, you know, or they can say, okay, fine, you have the right to strike, but then the president can say, yeah, but it's a matter of national security, so go back to work. Anyway, love you all to pieces. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed 
If you did, you know what to do. Hit the follow button. Get notified. Not, notified? Notified every time we go live, which is every Sunday right here. Twitch.tv slash RB underscore plays at 9 a.m. Uh, the VODs for these will be available the next day over on our YouTube channel. Uh, so if you want to watch them over there, you are more than welcome to. Um, I would I would hope you use the Danish model because you're in Denmark. Um, had a lot of fun. We'll be back in Minecraft next week. I've got a few things that I want to work on. Like I said, I was thinking about doing a... Uh, a vanilla episode for the YouTube channel. I haven't decided yet. Um, it's times like this when I actually wish I had an SMP server to play on because I would absolutely love to go and do one of these trial chambers so that I can get stuff for a mace. That'd be fun. But I'm not going to be able to do one of these trial chambers by myself. There's just no way. There's no way. <laughs> but uh, anyway, thank you all so much. Love you to pieces. We'll come back. We'll do this again next week. Actually playing Minecraft. You are all invited. But until then, get off my lawn. Bye, everybody. That's not the right... Nope. I screwed that up completely. Here, how about this one? <laughs> <laughs>